Good morning. Well, it's almost morning. It should be shortly. Well, for you guys, probably not going to see this till morning. But it's a good day. Cold as it may be. I decided I'd put something in front of some people that might warm them up. Or at least warm up their dreams. And if you had a good dream last night and you did what you're supposed to do, and you woke up this morning and you told yourself, I love you. If you visualized in a positive way what you needed on this very day, perhaps I've come to say I've got it for you. What would that take? How would I know? And if I had it, how would this go? Let's just suppose I offered up everything it took to make some dreams come true. This is a time when we need new dreams. And guess what? I'm good at dreams. This has been sent as a gift from Trinity's daddy. Whoops, you can't read it. It says Bundaberg Ginger Beer, which is an Australian family-owned not non-alcoholic beer. Has some real good sugar. Um, mm. And as a gift, of course, I'm obligated to sample it. Mm. Quite tasty. Um, but it is real sugar. Mm -hmm. mm. Ah, one of my great weaknesses in life. I've been nursing that all day long. Mm. Yes. Back to the subject. Anybody be curious about this? Well, lucky for y'all, Darby got together with Brad, that guy that used to have uh, tiny Texas houses, and, and got him to concede this really great gift to people that used to follow him when he was building houses, and they were all going to buy a house from him one day when he finally waited for them to go ahead and retire and come expect him to build them, which he long gone done, did that, and he didn't do that no more. Him, he's gone. Let's stop. He's not building houses. But you could be for your village. And how? Because he's going to give away one million dollars in materials. Salvage, vintage, doors, windows, flooring, siding, trim. Now we're talking a lot of this is like Good stuff. We're not talking about junk found. No, well, it's called trash for tax purposes. You always want to do that, by the way. In fact, if you can do this, you want to take this incredible pile of trash and you want to go ahead and build something with it. Now, what's that going to include? Well, lots of things. But here's the problem. We've got to rebuild our nation and we're going to have to do it with salvage. So who's going to lead the way? Well, while on his sabbatical... Brad got back here with me, Darby, taking care of everything, his ghostwriter, and said, hey, dude, would you do me a favor? I said, sure. Anything you say, Brad, anything you say. So, he gave me all this right to go ahead and give away packages of five houses worth of materials to people that want to do little villages. That means five sets of all the doors, all the windows, the flooring, the interior ceilings, the wall skins, the outside siding, the trim around all the windows, all the doors, and quality wood. You know that wood that went up 500% this year? Now, the trick is he's not going to supply you with 2 by 4s He's not going to supply you with 2 by 6s He's not going to supply you with um, insulation. You can get that locally. I'm not going to supply you with the screws and nails. You should be able to come up with it. They want some skin in the game, he said. He don't want to just give stuff away. People are going to not respect it. But for people who want to put that little village together, that little family community, that homestead, that pure salvage outpost where you go ahead and get the elders together. Because part of the requirement is you got to pull some people together to make it happen. You can't just say, I'm going to do it with no experience and no ability, no tools, and no place to put it. No, that ain't going to happen. That'd be mean and cruel. Brad's not going to do that to you. He's not going to set you up for failure. But success, well, my goodness. 
it's free to teach people how to be successful. And Brad taught me how to teach you loopholeology. Loopholeology is how do you get to have that success, that business where you write off your tools, you write off your food, you write off your trucks for your kids. How do you do that? How do you get out of the chute? How do you get in the race? Well, I'm going to give you a real quick refresher on that just in case you haven't heard it before. But on top of that, I'm going to put a million dollars out there in the next six months for a little essay contest. Now, some people don't know what that means. They don't know how to write. They don't know what an essay is. So. But some do. Bundaberg. Ginger beer. Hmm. I know. It's too sweet. All sugar. No alcohol. Tasty stuff, though. Now, suppose that you got to supply a labor location. You got to go ahead and get some help, line up some elders. So you got some advice, maybe some tools. Could you get all this stuff together in a small community, a large family? A good garage, a barn to build in, a big tent you can take down after you get it dried in. Roofing material comes with the package, decking, beams for the loft, floor for the loft. Design, my goodness, look at that, yeah. Tiny Texas houses had designs for some of its houses, a 12 by 12, a 12 by 28. That's your get together house. These are all portable buildings in Texas. These are not classifiable as houses. These will not be taxed as houses. These will be actually relatively untaxed with no bill of sale when you're done in Texas. And they're portable buildings, so there's no bed and breakfast tax of 15% loophole. Because it's always going to be for sale. Test drive it. Stay in it at night. Pay me for a survey. Whatever you need to do, but ultimately no tax. If you put it on your property and you have five of them, and your kids each have one and you pass away, they don't <laughs> destroy your family trying to tear apart a house, seeing who can get a bedroom each. I was a real estate broker. I saw more families destroyed over the house. It was left to five kids, and nine, they didn't want to live together. They just wanted to cash in. Which means you had to nix out four of your brothers and sisters in order to cash in. And I watched it. Didn't matter how many brothers and sisters. It seems like there's always this nixing ceremony that goes on at the end. So, how do you stop that? You put a bunch of houses out there. Now, I suppose you don't have family. You want to go ahead and make family. You want to have friends. You want to build houses together. That's what Pure Salvage Outpost is about. Salvage your life. Salvage your family. Salvage is a way to rebuild. To teach. How are we going to do that? It's simple. I'm going to have an essay contest, and if you don't think I can do it, and I won't actually complete it, let me tell you something. I have. I've done it in the past. I gave a house away. One of these ladies that comes here and visits all the time, she actually submitted an essay contest, and believe me, I wish she had won, because the girl that won, I did not in the end. I think I may be chose the wrong person put it that way but this time with the help of trinity with the help of nate for judges on who's writing not only the best essay on why we should want to give you one two three four five houses worth of materials possibly and not just one winner it might be five of you all putting together an essay contest together to convince us that you've got both the manpower, the knowledge. Somebody's going to got tools or finding a way to get tools. Somebody's got the ability to teach you how to use them, not cut your hand off. And in the process of bringing these people together, I want to try to produce, inspire, motivate, incentivize elders. That'd be people my age. No older than me. 80-year-olds, 75-year-olds, 66-year-olds, <laughs> everybody older than me and me and my group. And all those people that are younger than me look older than me, but have great skills, have knowledge. Maybe have arthritis so bad they can't handle a hammer, but they can sure teach a kid how to handle a hammer. Concrete for peers. Don't need much. Wiring, goodness, don't need much. Any kid could wire a house, a tiny house. Any kid could plumb a tiny house. 
Any woman could learn how to build a tiny house. All you just say when you start off, let somebody else frame it. Because walking around on top with carrying a two by four, if you're 50 by 60 years old and you fall, I'm going to tell you, you may not bounce like you did when you were young. You may not recover. Yeah, COVID could be like walking apart compared to landing on your neck and breaking it. So, if we get somebody to frame it up, get a young crew frame it up, you can put all the siding in and everything else. All this could be part of this package. Now, it's not there's going to be no caveats on this package. There are. But some of you may choose to pay me back on these packages because if you do, I'm going to give you more and help you start businesses and communities that might grow to 20 houses and teach you how to get your own materials after my vast, vast warehouses that Brad has given me access to to give to you, to sell to. You can also buy because your package might be for a 12 by 12 house and you might want to have a 12 by 20 house to get a little extra spice it up package is going to be basic it's not giving you all the best of my best of the best windows and the best of the best of the best doors but it's giving you some really nice stuff and if you do it right and you win over the judges with your reasons essay contest where you're doing and what you're doing I'm telling you what Price of lumber these days? Stud hitting $8 for just a stud. Now imagine you're just going to be able to buy studs. It keeps going like this. You'll be lucky to buy just the dimensional lumber. That's what's called dimensional lumber. I'm not supplying that part. Well, I might, might supply some of it, but I'm not going to supply it with every package. I want you to have skin in the game. In other words, you have some investment. Otherwise, you won't appreciate it. I learned that in life. You just give somebody something, they want just more. Oh, give me more? Why? Because you gave me the first part. No, this is your temptation for incentivization. So if you go ahead and prove to me you got some savvy, a plan, people to help you. And then come out here. You might spend a couple of days out here to learn what the basics are. Make sure we comprehend, talk the same language. Like you saw the boards, not your hand. You know what you're doing. Nail guns for shooting nails through boards, not through fingers. I paid $12,000 for three fingers to get nailed together the day after I explained to the young gentleman that you keep your hand away from the back of the gun when you pull the trigger. Because sometimes it goes bang, bang. And it did. It was the thumb and these two fingers right there that got nailed together with a 16-penny nail. Boom, 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 boom. Ouch. $1,000 back then to walk into a Emergency ward, I think that's now $5,500 for that little nail. <sighs> Why would you want to have employees in this day and age when it costs you five and a half grand because somebody's nailed their fingers together after you just explained to them a day before? Why that might be a problem. <laughs> Who knew? Now, that's one of the problems of trying to go ahead and have seminars and teach people and do the things I used to try to do. Because some fool going to come along and drink himself silly the night before and show up the next day with half a head and do an oops and didn't listen to the part until I say, I told you so. And then he goes, oh, that's what you meant. As he's rushing off to the hospital expecting me to pay for his stupidity. It's ignorance until you've been told. But I used to believe there was no such thing as stupidity. It was all ignorance. No, there's stupidity. There's people who do stupid things in spite of you teaching them. So, Linda, hey, Cicely, are you? Uh, Cicely, you know, you're always here saying nasty shit, by the way, Cicely. Ugh, and you just, I, I don't know why you even bother coming here, girl. I really don't. I don't know I pay attention to you. But you got to come on here, too, and say your uggs and your crap, please. Take a hike. I love trolls. I love them to go someplace else. I'm about to qualify you as a troll, Cicely. Thank you. Onward. Let me do something nice for the rest of the people of the world. Cicely, why don't you go bug somebody else? Million dollars in materials, guys. Six months. When's it start? You're going to have to pay attention to more of these. And when Cicely comes back, Cicely, you're not in this. I actually have the right to tell people they cannot participate. 
Trolls are not allowed. I don't build troll houses. I don't offer materials for troll houses. As a matter of fact, I think trolls are just nasty things. Going out there and just putting that ugliness everywhere. As in U-G-H, Sicily, ugly. You got my point across? For the rest of you people, Linda, and others, you know I'm sincere about this. Some of you know the house I gave away. It's called the SA House. How many years has that been? Ten years? 350 words. It took me two tries. I didn't even get close to enough to pay for the house. $50 entry fee and uh, 350 words. SA. Best one got a house for it. Would you believe 350 entries. That wasn't enough pay for the house. But on top of that, there are people sent out their essay. Their 350-word potential essay turned in as, I want that house, give it to me. End of story. That's an essay to, to convince me to give them a $28,000 house. <sighs> that ain't gonna work, kids. Just so you know ahead of time. But, I'm serious. Brad doesn't need all that stuff anymore. He's got millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of stuff piled up in buildings. You got to come here and help take it out, put it on the, put it on the trailer, put it on your trucks. Show me you can put it together. Spend a couple of days here. Do a little teeny bit of work. And then you get to leave with a trailer and truckload and houses to go put together as part of the winners to then show and demonstrate to other people around you that you can do this, that others can do this, that you don't have to be a crazy old man like me to do this, to build a community, a communal group that recognizes unity of purpose, unity of thought, unity of spirit, unity of intention, to raise kids together so you can do homeschooling with some educated people around like retired teachers and or, or, you know, herbalists or permaculture or farmers or the kind of people that can teach them life skills along with math, which is actually quite simple if you talk correctly. If you make it hard enough, it could take you a long time not to learn it and never learn it. And I don't know why they do that. So, again, what I'm offering when you all wake up in the morning, because nobody's going to get to see this tonight, except, well, a few of you. Even a troll or two. Right, Sisley? So, I want you to go ahead and share when you do. I'm serious. We'll be back to tell you more. Because, of course, this is all part, again, the book of Wibblery and Love is a mix of reality and fantasy and dreams. What's your dream? Can we make your dream a reality? Can I put in the ingredients you need at this moment? Synchronicity? Do you have the perspicuity to see the opportunity to understand why timing is finally very important to you? Because there may come a time when you just can't run over here and get all this stuff easy breezy. Snow might be underground or something like that. Who knows? But if over the next couple years, while all this stuff is going funny and crazy, just if during that time, you decide to come over here and visit and leave with a trailer load or two, a semi even, if you have friends and have the ability and have the place and have the space and have the story, the plan. Yeah. And you can put it on paper and show us Trinity, Nate, Darby, we're going to check in with Brad and get final approval. Don't want to be giving this away without Brad's approval. It can be a son of a bitch sometimes. Excuse me. Well, that's the truth. She was, actually. Oh, yeah. But, um, if you want to get involved tomorrow, get back in touch. All you good people. Some of you come visit. Please, Pam, uh, more. I want you... Salvage is an embassy for the 
world union of beings on the intercosmic world union of beings scale, the society. And this is where you get to come, share, peace, talk, commingle, communicate, and peace, about peace, peaceful solutions, salvaging the best of our past to build a future around the world together, a world union of beings. What are our odds of making peace together? I don't know. What can we? Yes, all the eyes of the world in the different countries speaking so many different languages by a tiny little language of 20 words, a tiny little hmm, a word virus. This is basically a peace virus. It's meant to go around and catch people's heads and convince them that it's possible for us to have a world union of beings that don't want war. We want peace. We want unity. We want to take all these wonderful resources we have and use them for the betterment of all beings, not for war. That way we can go out and venture around the universe. They'll, they'll like us then. You see, you don't really want a bunch of people to just get into fights all the time amongst themselves because what's your chances of being able to get along with anybody else? Not good. So, why, 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 why? Why am I the guy, the writer, the ghostwriter? Why is Brad picking me to give all this stuff to you guys? Because last time around it was a mess. And he just said, I ain't doing it again. I ain't having no essay contest to give away a million dollars worth of stuff to a bunch of ingrates. I said, no, they're not ingrates, man. Trust me. There's some good people out there, I said. Now, Brad, he's, he's a businessman. He said, bullshit. Remind you, Brad's done. He's, he said he's not having anything else to do with it. He's not going to have any more employees. He's not going to... Just done with it. Clinton's did that to him. Obama did that to him. He just finally got sick and tired of it. He said, I am not going to contribute to it. My spirit, my soul won't let me do it. So Brad said, five years ago, that's it. And he shut it down. But he came out of his sabbatical and he was actually going to come back and do something. And then you know what? Jeez. Same people got back in power. Looks like that at least. So he said, heck with it. So guess what, guys? You're going to benefit big time, big time. Because we're going to start off with giving the first million away in the first six months. And if it works out. And we get some communities that actually do this to put together the plan. I offered it up to a few. You'd be amazed how many people get upset with you because you want to go ahead and give them a million dollars worth of stuff. I got no place to put it. I got no. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. You're right. If you believe you can't, you can't do anything. You can't do anything you believe you can't do. Now, if you believe you can do something and you want to tell me about it and share it, and I'll share it with Trinity, and I'll share it with Nate, who's a, he's a, he's a plant person. That's the permaculture division. You got to have a way to eat. You got to have a way to plant food. You got to have green thumb people in your group. You got to have carpenters in your group if you're going to build a little community. Yeah. You got to have cooks. Cooks. I don't, women, men, I don't care. Cooks. You got to have Animal husbandry. Somebody knows something about men. A nurse, maybe? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. A grandma type would be nice. And kids. I'd love to see some kids in the package. You see, this isn't just about you. No. No. This is about your group. Your clan. The part of the you all together, all you eyes that are going to be part of the we that help make a difference. All of us that can see me. That's the me, you know, me. Me, all parts of me, M-I-I, -I. these eyes, this side. Me, trying to help you, not give you fish, not give you a rental place. 
Teach you how to build a house, build a community, build a new family. Help those homeless people I talked about earlier. They're the good people with no home. Veterans in many cases, six out of 10 women on the street, veterans. Most of the men on the street, veterans. So I'm gonna make it possible. I'm gonna help give away a million dollars and if that's not good enough and we keep going good, we'll kick another million dollars in. Yeah. Of materials. Wood. And if it gets going good, you know what? I think we can convince Brad to just stay away and we'll give another million away. Because right now it's about $7 million worth of materials. Hardware. Lumber. A lot of just going to go to waste which is what he kind of thought the country was doing. But I've convinced him for the moment. Tell your friends, please, don't make a liar out of me. Help me prove to Brad he may be back in this country one day. But for the moment, liars and cheats are in charge. I think he's just going to stay out of the business world entirely and enjoy traveling all around the world. I want to give him a reason to be proud to come back. To be part of this again. You want to help me? I'm talking to the whole world. Yeah. Brad just didn't just take off on a short trip. No. He's off with our friends. The other ones. Here to help. Yeah. So, we're giving away this package. Please. Tell your friends. Hope. Inspiration. Packaged up. With wood, windows, flooring, designs, inspiration. Motivation. Now. Will you take action? Are you listening? This is part of that story that you helped me write. Remember? The book of Wibblery and Wub. It's made up of me. W-I-I is the we. And together, communicating, communicating, communicating. Wobbling. Wibbleizing, creating with our spiritual energy, villages, houses, a future. That nebulous thing nobody can actually nail down. What is that? It's different for you. It's different for somebody else. You may be Church of Christ. You may be Mormon. You may be a bunch of different things. I don't care. That's not the point of it. You may be a family. You may be trying to form a family with your friends. You may be trying to put people who need help together and give them a chance. That's what this is about. Pure salvage outposts. Salvage your life. Salvage your dreams. Salvage your future. Together. Communities. Locally. Take down those old buildings. Take down those old lumber mills. Take down those old industries that abandon America. Take back those buildings, use that eminent domain, just tell them, look, you wrote them off, they're with zero, they're a liability, you give them to us. You take those bricks, you build a future. All those old bricks, millions of them, you build a future. You sell them, you push them off to other cities that need them that are building. You take all that lumber, you take everything, that is our future in America. Don't give it to China anymore. Quit selling America. You politicians, quit selling our future, our uranium, Clintons, Obama. And of course, don't you dare forget bidding on a president who would sell the uranium too, because he didn't just sit there and watch it. Or did he? He may not remember. In that imaginary world, where we can pull things out of, to materialize almost magically like we're going to do on a million 
dollars worth of materials to help form your dreams into reality. That's the reality in the future. Darby is here for. I can help you. Almost always I got my email down there. You'd think I didn't put it down there. You'd think there's no way to get hold of me. Why? Because most people, mm -mm. you ain't going to do nothing. No. Watch, look, listen, smile. That's your chance. Remember? By the time you wake up, if I'm not mistaken, We're getting on with a new life, new world. Cold one, as a matter of fact. But what happens when that thaws? It cross anybody's mind that all those tropical and subtropical plants? Nah, that's 50 years of growth gone. In some areas, 30 years of growth gone. Got to be replanted. It's gone. If it happens again next year, it's gone. That's food. Because a lot of things aren't going to happen this year. Please, again, if it thaws out, how many times you got to get hit over the head with a two-by-four before you wake up out of your dream? Or you just like it there? And you're just hoping one of those two-by-fours is going to knock you flat out and you'll never get up again. And call it rapture. Or some stupid name. Or excuse for not waking up today. And doing something. Okay? Please. Don't let that depression get you down. Wake up. Tell yourself you love yourself. And you love the people you're supporting. And you're not going to give in, cave in, walk away from your job as a human being. Yeah. Love you. You're the best piece of God I can see out there. Share that thought with him. Thank you.